So uh, today we'll be talking about interfaces. Okay, right. And uh, I'll make a new project. Right. And I'll create a new Java project named as. Day three. Right. So out here look let's start with interfaces and i'll tell you what an interface is interface is uh, something uh, which uh, gives you an idea about system okay right and uh, for example, uh, when you buy a book, okay, just by looking at the cover of the book, you guess what the book is all about, right? And just by looking at it, you can understand, right? That what that book is, how that book will be helping you. Right, the index page of that book gives you an overall picture. So index page is like the interface. Right, so interface is something which gives an idea about the system. Okay, similarly in Java we have interfaces. Right, and out here I'll create a new class. Right. or a new interface right I'll create a new interface okay and I'll call it as say simple interface car Uh, okay, now what are the features in a car? Okay, car can say you can write public void start. All right, car can stop. Okay. Right, so you have two features in a car known as stop and start. Right, okay, so this is an interface. It gives you an idea what an interface is more or more or less what an interface is about okay the car interface it gives you an idea that what a car is supposed to do a car is supposed to have two functions start and stop right fine so suppose i create a new class known as say honda car right Okay, fine. So Honda car is supposed to have these two functions, right? So we generally write public class Honda car implements the car interface.
All right, this is how we write in Java. Now, what do you mean by implementing interface? What do you mean by implementing an interface? If a class is implementing an interface, right, then it is supposed to implement all the functions of the interface. Okay, you will get an error over here. If you move the mouse over the error, you will get the option to add unimplemented methods, right? You can add the unimplemented methods. Okay, if a class is implementing an interface, then it's supposed to implement all the functions of the interface. Fine. Okay. Right. For example, you the, the if I remove the stop function, you will again get an error. Okay, so you have to put it back. At the rate override sign, it's known as annotation. You can remove it or you can keep it. Right. Okay, you can remove it or you can keep it. This is basically known as an annotation. Okay, this basically tells that this class is implementing the interface car. Okay, right. Alright, this function is having or, or this function is coming from the car interface. This is what the annotation. This is what the annotation tells that this function is coming from the car interface. Okay. Right. So inside this you can print. on the car starting and on the car stopping okay right so Out here, suppose I make a new class. Just be with me. BMW. Car. Okay. This is also implementing the car interface. So if this class is implementing the car interface, you have to add the unimplemented methods mandatorily. Okay. And you can print inside this BMW car starting. Okay. And BMW car hold on stopping right so you can have these two functions 
okay fine so you have two classes honda car which is having start and stop functions and bmw car which is also having start and stop functions right so what i did was that I made an interface okay okay and you made two classes you had two functions start and stop in the interface and both the functions are there in the classes as well implemented okay right so you have this thing but what is the advantage of this i could have never made the interface all right and i could have just made the two classes all right the advantage is firstly it gives a structure to the application that is um by saying structure to the application i mean that if if a person looks at this class he will know that this class will have two functions start and stop okay because the class is implementing the interface so just by looking at the interface you can see that what kind of functions will be there in the classes and tomorrow if more classes are added in the system more car classes come then they will also have same set of functions okay right i hope you got my point all right now let's come back to the eclipse and i'll create a new class known as suppose test car with the main function right out here i'll create the object of honda car all right and you call the functions start and stop okay so when you run this code so you see that honda car stopping honda car starting all right and then you create the object of bmw car
okay and write vmw car dot start and stop okay so when you run this okay it says that honda car starting honda car stopping bmw starting bmw stopping okay pretty simple you create the object of the car class respectively and call the functions the function names are same Okay, function names are same. All right, and out here. If you understand this carefully, I'm going to put you through something which might confuse you. Hold on, my computer is hanged, one minute. Yeah, it's fine now. Right. Now, till now, we have created the objects like the name of the class reference equals to the object. All right. And out here, we are going to define the object in a different way. I'm going to take the reference of the car interface, equate it to the object of Honda car. So this way, this way, And this way, these are the two ways to create the object. Over here, the references of the Honda car. Over here, the references of the car interface. What is the difference between these two? What is the difference? Okay. Now, suppose Honda car offers a feature which nobody else offers. For example, a public void GPS. Okay, just taking a small example. And I'll print Honda GPS. Now this function is not there in the interface. This function is proprietary to this class. Okay. Is proprietary to the Honda car class. Okay, right. All right, so if you create the object of the car class over here, you can call the function Honda car dot GPS, but you cannot call it with BMW, of course. But if you create the object like this, this means that you can access all the functions in the Honda car class, which is coming from the interface, which are coming from the interface. Okay.
on right so if you write c dot start and c dot stop you can access the start and stop functions this way but if i try to access gps you will not be able to access all right fine so you have got three objects out here but the third way is different all right so this way you can access the functions in the honda car coming from the car interface not the proprietary ones but what is the use of this line okay Has anybody seen the video number four? Has anybody seen the video number four? No. Okay. So the advantage is if I declare say car C1 equals to new Honda car. On the next line I can make C1 point towards new BMW car. It's the interface of the car. It can point towards any of the implementing classes. Out here if I write C1 dot start. This will call the start function in Honda car. If I, if I write C1 dot start. It will call the start the same command. Okay, the same command, and when I I run this so you see that okay you have any questions So you have this thing, right? The advantage is that just by switching the reference, you can call the same function, but from a different class. Okay, I can define like car C2 equals to null. Based on my choice, I can make C2 point towards BMW car or I can make C2 point towards Honda car. Okay, right. Now, how is this helpful in Selenium? 
okay let me just okay and you go to the selenium hq website Okay, and go to the download section. Right, and look at the Java doc link. Look, this is the whatever is there in italics. <clears throat> whatever is there in italics is an interface okay right right and this is the interface web driver okay now this interface has got few functions which help you manage a browser okay right and these are the functions in the interface which help you manage for example get title will get the title of the web page okay fine uh, and if you look at the top hold on Right. Right. So if you look at the top, these are the implementing classes. All the driver classes which we discussed that day implement the web driver interface. Okay. Right. And and this basically means that i can define my web driver to null the interface reference to null okay and hold on let me add the jar files okay and you can make driver point towards object of your choice i have either firefox or you can make driver point towards new chrome driver okay right All right, so you can make the driver point towards the object of the implementing class. Okay, so this way you can dynamically launch the browser. Okay. 
okay this way you can dynamically launch the browser right you can define like for example string browser on which you want to work it's chrome so you can keep an condition that if browser Chrome, then make driver point towards new Chrome driver. Else, if browser is Firefox, then make driver point towards Firefox driver. Okay, right. Alright, so this is how this is how it works. Fine. So based on your choice, now if I run the program, Chrome will launch. My Chrome has an issue. Okay, I did not fix it. Sorry. I'll put Firefox. In. Okay. Because they all implement the web driver interface. So once you have opened the browser, you can use the regular code driver.get say go to http yahoo.com and you can print the title of the web page driver.get title. So when you run this code, You see that it reaches yahoo.com. All right, fine. So, this is how interfaces are used. Okay right and we will be using this concept to launch the browser dynamically okay now how do you move forward you have to identify elements you have to click here and there okay right how, how do you do that right so i'll talk about that in the next class today i have to leave a little early